And uh, the best part is, they thought you guys gave me the once-over. Who did you tell? What? Who else did you tell about the raid? Well, I had to tell my secretary. Guys, I'm the head of the pro bioproducts division. I, I, you know, she has to know where to get in touch with me. I told her months ago. So all I said was, Liz, I'm doing some work with the FBI. I might be out of touch for a while. Love the tone of the film. I thought it was, um, I thought it was a really tricky piece to pull off, and I thought it was amazing how everybody was on the same page with it. What is it that attracts you to a piece of work on the written page? My initial thought was exactly what you said, that it's, it's so hard to pull off this tone. And like, how, do you, how, how is it that you get a group of people to get this tone right? And it's all the director. Um, like the courtroom scene, where I, see, where I apologize to the community before I get sentenced. You know, exactly. mm -hmm. Made, you know sorry, I hurt a lot of people. And I'm on medication now, all that, all that <laughs> stuff. That was a transcript of what he said. And the first time I did it, I did it as I imagined he really did do it, which was really heartfelt and earnest. And, you know, w because, I, because he was at that point, you know, and, yeah. and the apology was, 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 was that way. And then Stephen just walked up and he goes, no. And I went, what? I thought that was very real. And he goes, no, wrong movie. And I go, uh, okay. And he goes, do it. And he thinks for a second, he goes, uh-huh, okay. Do it like you're, you're accepting an award. <laughs> And it was br the most brilliant direction. I went, okay, I got it. I got it. And I did it. I interviewed Gilliam earlier this summer, which was a lifelong dream come true. And I, I, I love his movies. I love his process as well. Um, and he finally told me the true story of The Nose and everything that went on behind the scenes with yeah. that and how, how difficult it was just and how subtle it was. But it really came down to the poster and putting you on the poster. No, well, a few things. I mean, a few backstories. Number one that, that I think you'll like. The reason that I wear a nose in Ocean's 13, right, that big ridiculous nose, for no reason. I mean, <laughs> the c character puts on a nose and he's going, the nose plays, you know, and, it's a, it's a, and he's saying to his dad, it's not a prop for prop's sake, you know. He, it's a totally meaningless, there's no reason for him to put the nose on. But the reason we did it is because Stephen heard the story about the Brothers Grimm and was like, nice. not only can you put a nose on one of your stars, you can put a nose this big on one of your stars <laughs> in a movie that costs twice what the Brothers Grimm cost and still make money, you know. So it was kind of a solidarity between directors type of move. But, um, but then with this one, yeah, I mean, this, yeah, there's a nose piece on, on the end of my nose here because, uh, because Stephen's feeling was he wanted the character to be... You know, I, pu I put the weight on and, and put the nose thing on because he, he wanted the character to be somebody who's, you didn't know wh where his boundaries were, kind of. Mm -hmm. you know? like he, and he said, I don't want you to have any hard edges. So he, that piece was just to kind of take, take the edge of, you know, so, so, so that the character was kind of hard to define, uh, just as a metaphor for, for who the guy really was. But in the, the short answer to, it, to, to that is the informant cost 22 million bucks. And at that level, you can do more than... than if it was an $85 million movie, yeah. um, there might have been more pushback. Listen, I haven't been telling you guys the whole truth, but I'm going to clear that up in there today. What? No, 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 no,